Hi and welcome to RC Modders and this the second video in the series automating and radio controlling the Bruder low loader trailer. In the first part I showed you how I automated the legs using Actuonix linear servos and controlling it with budget hobby grade radio control and in the second video I'll be showing you how I automated the ramps using the custom kit from Piggy Taylor. I'll post links in the description as to how you can get hold of these. I did think about inventing my own solution to this but to be quite honest if something already exists and I can't think of a more cost effective or better performing way of achieving the same thing then I'll use it. So having ordered this from Piggy Taylor's eBay store a couple of weeks ago it was dispatched the following day and the day after that it actually arrived. Let's see what you get for the £40 which I think is incredibly good value. First of all the main lever which has been handcrafted with a thread. Secondly, this pre-assembled back plate with all of the screws that you need. And I'm really pleased to see that it's actually got countersunk bolts here because I was thinking that I was going to have to use some of my own. The casting on this knuckle is superb and it's all been really nicely cleaned up. And finally, an MFA gearbox motor, 30 to 1 gear ratio that runs at between 12 and 24 volts. Note it has a suppressor which means that we shouldn't get any interference with the radio control. This is just the data sheet for the motor. I have watched Piggy Taylor's instructional video on how to fit this and I'm using that as a basis for quite a bit of this build. I'll put a link in the video in the top right hand corner so you can watch that version if you prefer. First thing we need to do obviously is take out these screws from the pre-threaded holes. This food container is quite a useful place to keep everything. This metal plate is exactly the same width as the outside of the ramp so you can see where it's going to line up and we're going to need to cut out an area here for this to move up and down. I cut a slot in the back, I probably needn't have gone beyond this horizontal part of the moulding here and it's about an inch inside each of these mouldings and the width of it is just under an inch. To cut it I use the hexaw blade and then just cleaned it up slightly with a file. The next part is really the most critical and the first thing is to make sure that you get this bracket round the right way because there are a few ways to put it round and it only works one way and it kind of goes about there this way round. In Piggy Taylor's video he actually drills the holes with it on the model and I can understand why that might be because it keeps everything aligned but this first hole I want to get absolutely right I'm actually going to take the ramp off the model for that. So taking the first ramp, the place it needs to be, it needs to line up exactly with the side here and this piece here needs to be parallel with this piece of plastic there. So it's going to need to be like that and if I just use the set square I can, I can get it into about the right place which is there and I'm only going to drill one hole each side like this, the other hole I'll actually do on the model and he says to mark it with a two and a half millimetre bit so that we don't strip out the threads just go through and then go through with a three millimetre bit and then countersink it on the other side And then being careful to get it around the right way. That's fine. And then having got the first hole in the right place, you put it all back on and you can do the remaining holes. Starting with this one. making sure that that all moves nice and freely and then the last two holes using the electric drill making sure it's a two and a half millimetre draw bit because otherwise it will take out the threads straight as possible
having quickly tested it I found that actually it does matter if it's tight between the top of the ramps and the back of the truck. This is quite a useful thing when the ramps aren't automated however when they are in the very up position there is not a great deal of leverage from the motor onto this part here so what I did was I took these off again and I'll just do that quickly for you got to be careful with this and so what I did was I used the file and I just took some material off all the way around until when these are installed it's not quite touching and that means you're going to get a much smoother action and it isn't going to get stuck at the top the other thing which I did just to make it a little bit easier was I got hold of my countersinking piece and just gave it a couple of twists on each of the insides of these holes on both sides and that made it just loose enough to kind of feel satisfactory so I'll just pop it up the other way okay, and I'm pushing it by hand and it easily goes to the up position and more importantly it easily comes down again so that should work when the motor is hooked up the next thing to consider is the mounting of the motor now when the ramps are flat this is actually the point when this knuckle here is at its highest point so I'll just push this in for a moment with the motor mounted you've actually got a very very thin gap between this rear axle and the threaded rod I can almost get my piece of sandpaper in but not quite the wheel is still free to move and in reality you aren't going to be driving the truck along in this highest position because when the ramps are fully lowered or indeed when the ramps are fully raised this will actually drop away to some extent so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the motor about here but note that I'm actually doing it in one of these squares because if I need to countersink this motor at all afterwards it's much easier not to have to cut any of these ribs out and hopefully retain the most strength for the chassis I'm going to start by marking a single pilot hole in about the right place with a one and a half millimeter drill bit just take this off and you'll see why in a few moments so I'll just draw that through now the motor mustn't be held tight because of the slight change in angle of the shaft as the ramps go up and down and what Piggy Taylor recommends is that you actually leave these loose well I might leave them loose or I might put a piece of rubber in there or something because I don't want the motor shaking around okay so we have one hole here what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark all four holes using the hole which I drilled first as a guiding point Right, I'm going to make two and a half millimeter holes here because I actually want the bolts to be quite tight and not to be able to slip around that looks compared with the motor that looks pretty good As it happens I have quite a few of these countersunk bolts. The length of them is about 17-18 millimeters. Right, that's all those in, reasonably flush. So taking the motor that goes on quite easily and so the motor is going to need to be able to move around a little bit but I don't want it being loose so I'm going to chop up some silicon fuel tubing probably 
it's about an eighth of an inch and then on each bolt piece of silicon tube M3 washer and a locking nut this is likely to be quite a fiddly process and take me a few minutes to do so I'll just do that off camera slide it on got the grub screw and then I'm going to put a terminal block on here which is going to hopefully give me choices later for instance if I want to put in travel limiters again countersunk another countersunk screw what I'm trying to do is make sure I can still put this part in to go up and down okay so now for the moment of truth let's see if it all works up So that's the fully up position, and when it's up here, nowhere near the axle. So that's good. Let's try the down. Perfect. Let's just see how much more it's got to that. Well, between between the two ends, I would say <laughs> I would say that we've got quite a bit of movement in that. So I'll just put it back down again. Right, so at the start of this video, I thought I was going to put end limiters on it. I don't think that that's going to be necessary. It's very controllable. It moves quite slowly. I'm actually happy with the speed that it moves at. It is a 12 to 24 volt motor in there after all. So I guess I would expect it to move quite slowly at 7.2 volts. I did have to remember to take the little plug out of the speed controller that not only had a brake, but gave you 50% power in reverse because that really was too slow. I think I can declare the trailer complete for now. At some point in the future, I expect I'll come back to it and I'll probably try and do one or two other things with it. Very pleased with this, happy with all the wiring, and it is worth spending a little bit of time getting your wires neat and tidy, especially with something like this because it's like to catch, and then you're going to be going along one day and the thing's going to be unhooked. Before finishing the video, I do need to point something out, and having just done the run video outside, which is either end of this video, what I discovered was that the back of the truck here was actually hitting on where I had put the receiver. So I just shoved the battery along slightly and put the receiver in here, and that's held down with the elastic band. I might go back and tidy up the wires slightly at some point, but I just thought that I would point that out because if you try to run the truck with the receiver here, the back of the truck there is just going to catch it on the end of the mud guards. So in conclusion, I'm not sure how much more there is to say. Piggy Taylor's ramp lifting mechanism does exactly what it says on the tin. It does it extremely well. There was certainly nothing that I could think of to improve or modify it. Following his instructions, which I hope I've reproduced here, will give good results. The most important thing is to get that plate absolutely lined up. You don't want it too high or too low because it's either not going to work or it's going to fail on something. I think it's a very cleverly designed product made to an extremely high standard. No finishing required afterwards. Eight holes to be drilled in the right place and you're away. I think his choice of motor and gearbox is good because I think that's a nice scale speed. The last thing you want is the thing flying up and down. I also think that for the price you really can't complain and it really would not have been worth my while trying to fabricate something to do exactly the same job 
and I'm sure I would have ended up doing it in a similar fashion anyway. This saved me a lot of time and I'm certainly not one to go reinventing the wheel for its own sake. I hope I've added something to Piggy Taylor's already very informative video which I actually didn't realise he had made when I planned to do this one. So now I need to think about which project I'm going to do next. It's either going to be the detailed truck build, having already completed the Bruder Mac prototype in the previous video, or I'm going to be making a start on the Volvo A60H. Currently I'm waiting for a few parts to turn up, and whichever ones do turn up first, are going to determine which of the projects I start next. As ever, please keep those likes, subscribes and comments, especially the comments coming. I do like to hear what you think and the ideas that you've got on all of this. And once again, thank you very much for watching.